Some time ago, I ordered some cheap Arduino Pro mini boards from AliExpress that I wanted to use for a recent project. As soon as I took it out, I found something different and thus I made this comparison video between the Chinese Arduino Pro mini board and the original one. These are all the components that I used to do the comparison. So let's get started. The Pro Mini boards came in a standard package consisting of the main board itself along with the necessary headers. And as soon as you pay close attention to the board, you notice something different. Notice the waveguide written on the board. I also noticed that the microcontroller on the board was a bit different. Instead of the Atmega 328P, it was a waveguide 328. Sounds fishy. Let us now compare the board to the standard Pro Mini board consisting of the Atmega 328P. Well, the board layout is pretty similar but I had my trust issues on the microcontroller used. Let us now have a closer look at the WaveCat Pro Mini board. Looking at the placement of the components and the solder, it seems like a pretty neat job without the excessive flux and excessive solder. As you can see, the microcontroller is a WaveGAT 328P instead of the Atmega 328P. The other components include some resistor capacitors and standard other components that you might find in a Pro Mini board. With that being said, I was eager to test this board out. So I started by soldering the male header pins onto the main board. With the soldering process out of the way, I fired up the Arduino IDE, launched up the basic blink program and uploaded on the board. I selected the Arduino Pro Mini from the board's list, selected the proper COM port for my FTDI breakout and uploaded the code onto the board. And as soon as the upload was completed, I noticed that the output was different from the standard blink sketch that was taking much longer than one second to toggle. This was kind of expected because the microcontroller was a completely unknown one, probably even a copy of the standard Atmega. To compare these two boards, I uploaded the same blink sketch to both of them and simultaneously powered them up with a 5V regulator. And you can clearly see the difference in the switching duration. This could be due to a different crystal oscillator that may not be the standard 16MHz that we used on the Arduino boards. After doing a little research on the internet, I found this GitHub repository that had the board files that made such WaveGAT boards Arduino compatible. So I downloaded them and extracted the hardware folder to the Arduino folder and copied the library files to my existing list of libraries and restarted the IDE. The GitHub link is in the video description below. With the necessary libraries and the hardware boards installed, I now reopened the Blink sketch and selected the WaveGuard Pro Mini board, selected the proper COM port and uploaded the Blink sketch again.
Next, I wanted to try out the PWM function and so I wrote a simple code where a PWM signal is generated on pin 9 with a duty cycle of 50% and firstly uploaded it to the Arduino Pro mini board. And as you can see from the Arduino Pro Mini, we have a stable PWM signal of roughly 490Hz with a duty cycle of 50%. I now changed the board settings to the WaveGuard Pro Mini, selected the proper COM port and uploaded the same PWM program again. And as you can see, the results are quite similar to the Arduino Pro Mini board with the frequency being nearly the same and getting a stable signal of 50% duty cycle. The PWM works just as expected. I also created a simple LED fade in fade out program using a for loop to gradually increase and then decrease the duty cycle of the PWM signal giving the LED sort of a pulsing effect and that works fine as well. You can also see the waveform on the oscilloscope attached. Next, I use the CH340 USB to serial converter to see and visualize data on the serial monitor. Why not the direct FTDI breakout you ask? The reason being, the board did not support the standard serial communication protocol and I had to use software serial to visualize any data on the Arduino serial monitor. I wrote a simple sketch where I made pins 9 and 10 as the virtual RX and TX pin and uploaded the sketch to the WaveGuard board with the potentiometer as an input to visualize the analog data. With the sketch compiled and uploaded, I used the potentiometer to change the values and saw the values on the serial monitor as well as the serial plotter. And to my surprise, I got quite good results on the serial plotter with the values being correctly displayed while I was changing the potentiometer values. I then noticed something different when I opened the serial monitor and quickly realized that the ADC had a different resolution than the standard 10-bit resolution of the Atmega boards, with the highest and the lowest ADC reading being 3098 and 0 respectively. Next, I wanted to try out the I2C communication protocol and for that, I attached a small 0.96 inch OLED display, opened up the example code from the Adafruit SSD1306 library and uploaded it to the WaveCat board. Quite interestingly, the code works perfectly with all the visuals correctly displayed. I noticed the transitions were smooth and the board was executing the large size code just fine. So, is this WaveGuard board a replacement to the Arduino Pro Mini boards? Is it any better? Well, not really, but you can definitely use it for some simple to intermediate complexity projects. With that being said, let me know in the comments section if you have encountered such kind of boards from China and the solutions that you implemented to make it work properly. Like, share and subscribe to my channel for more such content and I will see you in the next one.